Well, hello everybody. Happy hump day. It's Wednesday. Lucy here. I don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> Maybe I'm happy that I am halfway through the week. How are we all doing? Are you having a good week? I hope so. I've been extremely busy today. In fact, I've only just got in from work and I have scoffed, literally scoffed a banana before recording this because I am so hungry. I've been in the office all day today and it really struck me today when I was feeling hungry around, around lunchtime that everything that they sell where I work is either stacked full of carbs or lots of fat, not the healthy type either. And I literally walked around our canteen, of which there's quite a big selection, and there was nothing particularly healthy. I have to do that at the moment because I am sticking to my diet. I've lost £10, you know, three, three weeks, £10. But there was nothing healthy, and I was looking around, looking around, thinking, no, no, no. So then I thought, surely there'll be some fruit on sale. They had little packets of mango chunks that were overpriced, and I'm not a big fan, fan of mango anyway. And there really was nothing. And I was gobsmacked almost as to how unhealthy all the food was. And I didn't end up eating anything. So I um, got myself, because I'm a bit of a coffee lover anyway, I got myself a large skinny latte uh, and filled up on milk, which is not the best thing to do. And I've literally just come in, scoffed a banana because of being so hungry. So I'm recording this and then I am going to go and make myself something relatively healthy. So I might have a quinoa salad with some grilled chicken is what I'm thinking. Either that or a tuna salad, don't know. I don't know. We'll see. One of those two, I'm sure. I hope you have a nice dinner, whatever you are having to eat today. I have to stick to my diet while I'm thinking about it because I will get derailed at some point. Either I'll go out for a meal with friends or something will happen. I will get derailed and then I will really struggle to get back on the right track. So uh, whilst my head is in the right place, I need to stick to it. Indeed, I do. Anyway, I'm sure none of you really want to hear about my eating habits at the moment. What have we got on a Wednesday night? We have got files from that insurance investigator, Johnny Dollar. I don't know why I say it like that, but I tend to want to. I've been talking in a stupid voice for quite a bit today, in fact. But I won't go into detail about that because that will bore you even more than my eating habits. Yes, Johnny Dollar. This episode is called The Mark Grace Matter and it was first broadcast on the 20th of October, 1957. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Randy Singer, Johnny. Oh, hi, Randy. How's the New York City Police Department these days? Well, the department's fine. Me, I'm not so sure. Well, then maybe I'd better run on down there and cheer you up a bit, huh? Yeah, you'd better come down here on account of Mary Grace Marshall. Hey, how do you know Mary Grace? The point is, you do. Well, matter of fact, I just got back from a weekend in that town of yours. Yeah, Mary Grace and I had a ball. We took in a couple of shows, did the nightclub routine. Yeah, I know. Even spent Sunday afternoon together out at the... What do you mean, you know? Johnny, your little girlfriend's been murdered. What? Yeah. Randy, have you got any leads, anything to go on? Yeah, Johnny, plenty. Then I'll grab the first plane. Yeah. You'd better. <laughs> Bailey in the exciting adventures of a man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Well, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Mideastern Life and Casualty Insurance Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Mary Grace matter. Expense account item one, 10 cents. Phone call to the airport to reserve a seat on the first plane to New York. Item two, phone call to Ben Perrin at the Claims Department of Mideastern Life. Ben, this is Johnny Dollar. Oh, hello, John. Now, listen, I'm on my way down to New York at your company's expense, though the expense part is beside the point. Oh, uh, no, no, just wait a minute. Mary Grace Marshall has just been murdered. Marshall? Your company holds a policy on her, and I'm going down there to investigate. Well, now, wait, John, until we issue proper authorization for you to conduct the investigation. Don't give me that, Ben. I'm going down there now. 
Well, then it's completely without sanction from this or any other office. Okay, okay, forget it. I was trying to save time, and I thought I was doing you a favor. Well, I suppose you are, but until a request for your services can be rooted... I said forget it, didn't you hear me? I gotta go, gotta catch a plane. Well, for heaven's sake, man, what are you so up in arms about? Why you're so concerned about this particular... Because that girl was a personal friend of mine. A very dear friend. Oh. John, I'm... John, I'm sorry, I can see now why you're so upset. Yeah, I'm upset. By all means, go ahead, officially. And if there's anything I can do... Yeah, there is. You can stop all this yammering so I can hang up and get out of here. Goodbye. John. Yeah, what now? You really cared for that girl, didn't you? Yeah, Ben. I cared. Expense account item 3, 920. Cab to the airport and plane ticket to New York. The trip down there gave me time to think. And thinking about it hurt. Mary Grace Marshall. Tall, brunette, and very beautiful. And as straight a girl as I'd ever known. There was a time a few years ago when I'd hoped she might marry me. But she wanted to stay with her successful career as a fashion designer. And she was right. I'm not the marrying type either. So we just remain friends. We had a lot of fun together. Theaters, dancing, an occasional nightclub. Sometimes the long hair stuff, a recital or the opera. Or we go to the zoo or the circus, a boxing match or a baseball game. Or just go for a quiet walk in the park. And often, just a long, quiet evening in her apartment over a tall, cool drink and good conversation. A good night kiss. Sure. But that was all. Now she was gone. And believe me, somebody was going to pay. Item four, six dollars even for a fast taxi to the 18th Precinct Headquarters and Sergeant Randy Singer. Come on in, Johnny. Close the door. Sure. Hi. Better uh, sit down, huh? Yeah. All right, when did it happen, Randy, and how? You said on the phone you have some leads. Clues all over the place. They all point toward one person. Oh. Toward the one person known to have been with her at about the time the coroner says she was killed. How was she killed? Struggle. Fell and struck her head on the base of the fireplace. Cigarette, Johnny? Oh, yeah, thanks. Incidentally, so far I've been able to keep this thing out of the papers. Oh, hey, give me a light, will you? I seem to have forgotten my lighter. Yeah, you have. Here. Thanks, now, the coroner says she was killed Sunday night, late. What? By somebody who must have spent several hours with her. You said late Sunday night. That's a... Go on, Johnny. Hey, look, stop snapping that lighter and... Wait a minute, where'd you get that? According to all the evidence, it was left behind by whoever murdered Mary Grace Marshall. Here. Look familiar? Are you crazy? This lighter is mine. I... Yeah, Johnny. I know. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mary Grace Matter. Mary Grace Marshall, an old friend, a very dear one, murdered in her New York apartment on East 77th Street. Sergeant Randy Singer, my old friend at 18th Precinct Homicide, had called me immediately. And when I got there, showed me a very damning piece of evidence. Presented to Special Investigator Johnny Dollar by the International... Sure, Report. of course it's my lighter. And I must have left it in Mary Grace's apartment Sunday night. But that certainly doesn't mean that I killed her. Coroner says she died about the same time you were there. Oh, how do you know what time I was there? Wife of Charlie Walker, the building superintendent, Johnny. She saw you leave. That isn't enough evidence to convict a fly, and you know it. There's plenty more. Yeah, like what? Your fingerprints all over the place? Well, sure, I Cigarette told Cigarette you... butts, same brand you smoke. So what is that A for? lot of them, Johnny. Like a very nervous smoke. Uh, well, I was with her all evening. Doing what? Oh, now look, Randy. Surely you can't be serious. You can't think for a minute. You look, I... Johnny. This is my case. Nobody else's. I'm keeping it that way. I've kept it out of the papers. I think you know why. Oh, sure, sure I know why. Because we've been buddy-buddy for so long, you want to be sure that if anybody hangs me, you will for old times. sake. I asked you what you were doing. Well, let me tell you something, Randy. That girl meant a lot to me. What were you so doing Sunday night? So shut up and tell me what other evidence you have, what you know that can help me find out who... 
I- I'm sorry, Randy. Sure, it's it's your job. I'd probably do the same thing to you under the circumstances. If you didn't, I wouldn't have any use for you. But don't you see? Okay, look, look. We spent Sunday afternoon at the zoo, the Bronx Zoo. Went up on the subway. We walked a lot, got pretty tired. I promised her a dinner at the Chambord over on 3rd Avenue. But she said she had some food at the apartment, so we went back there. Then we just sat around and talked, played some music, that's all. And had some drinks. Yeah, I picked up a bottle of scotch on the way. How many drinks? Oh, one or two light ones is all. Sorry, Johnny, that bottle was nearly empty. But that's him. Who discovered the body? Mrs. Walker, wife of the apartment super. The one who saw you leave shortly after hearing the screams that made her... Screams? Yeah, that made her finally go up and look in the Marshall girl's apartment. she's crazy, Randy. You're lying. Can you prove it? I'd like to talk to that woman. I think you She's off a rocker if she told you she... What'd you say? I think you ought to see her. Huh? But if I'm your big suspect... Sure you are. Until you can help me prove I'm wrong. We drove over to the place on 77th Street in a prowl car. Everything was exactly as it had been when I'd left Sunday night, except that there were signs of a struggle, as Randy had said. A chair and a lamp had been knocked over. The hi-fi shoved aside when she'd fallen at the fireplace. Even the bottle of scotch from which I'd poured a couple of small... Hmm. What's the matter, Johnny? Well, I'm not sure, Randy, but... I'd have sworn I left this bottle out in the kitchenette where I... Huh? Hey, are you making more prints? Yeah. Look, this bottle of soda, three-quarters full. You don't kill most of a bottle of scotch with only this much soda. Unless you're drinking it straight. Oh, who drinks it straight these days? An alcoholic? Or somebody who needs a jolt for his nerve? Maybe. Want to go downstairs and talk to the super's wife? Yeah, let's. The superintendent's wife turned out to be a living doll. Young, pretty, with too much makeup. The sort of looked like she decided to get out of the chorus line for a quieter life as the wife of a building superintendent. I noticed a peculiar, spicy kind of odor when she first let us in, but thought nothing of it at the time. Now, you're sure this is the man you saw leaving Miss Marshall's apartment, Mrs. Walker? I was standing right here in this doorway. It was after I heard her screaming up there around midnight. You're sure you heard her scream? Well, my husband heard it first. He woke me up, pounding on the wall between our bedrooms. Well, didn't he get up to investigate? Oh, no, the lazy... Well, he's been sick. He's still sick. But then I heard the screaming, so I run into his room and ask him what to do. Go back to bed and forget it, he says. It's probably just a party upstairs. Then you went up and found the body, huh? Well, first I tried to sleep, but I kept thinking I heard noises. From upstairs? Well, no. You're sure? It was like maybe my husband was getting up or something. Go on. Well, finally, about 2 a.m., I went up to her apartment. When she didn't answer my knock, I let myself in. And there she was, dead. Who called the police, you or your husband? Him? Uh, Besides, I told you he was sick. He still is. I'd like to talk with him. Oh, sure. If he's sober enough. Come on. That was a funny crack. If her husband really was sick, she led us toward the rear of the apartment, and I mistakenly started to enter her bedroom. That peculiar odor again, only more pronounced. And believe me, it was an arpege. Here, mister, this way. Her husband's bedroom was pretty much of a mess, untidy, with pictures of bathing beauties, calendar art, and some striking pictures of Mary Grace Marshall plastered all over the walls. This room had an odor about a two of stale booze. Here you are, Charlie. No. No, I, I tell you, I don't want any more of that stuff. Well, you seem to think it'd make you feel better. I did. What did you... Oh. Oh, the cop again. That's right, Mr. Walker. And this is the guy seen coming down from your girlfriend's apartment after all the screaming. His name's Johnny something. You actually heard screaming up there, Mr. Walker? Yeah. Yeah, awful racket. Woke me up. Scared me. What do you mean? That poor girl up there, all alone. Only she wasn't alone. But then it stopped. I figured maybe I'd been wrong. Had a nightmare or something. Yeah, sure. A dream about her. 
You think about me for a change instead of dreaming about that dame. Shut up. Talking about her, dreaming about her, sneaking around to have a look at her when she came in and out. If you wasn't sick, I think you'd sneaked up there and done her in because you couldn't have her. Will you take her out of here? It wouldn't be the first time a drunken bum has killed somebody. Shut up! Shut up! Mrs. Walker, I thought I told you this man was supposed to be kept quiet. Oh, well, now, look, Doctor, I... Doc, yet I walk in here and find this sort of thing going on. Go on, all of you. Out of here while I attend this man. Just a minute, Doctor. Out immediately. This is a heart case complicated by a very serious virus infection. Doc, if I can have just one Later, minute. officer. I must save this man's life. Come on, Randy. You too, Mrs. Walker. Yeah, sure, sure. He's been getting alcohol again, strictly against my order. Now, look here, Mrs. Walker. No, no, wait. Huh? Come on upstairs with me again. Oh? What'd you think of? A couple of things, Randy, that I believe will clinch this case so fast. Come on. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mary Grace Matter. What do you mean, clinch the case, Johnny? Didn't you hear enough from Charlie Walker and his wife? Yeah, I heard plenty, Randy. Well, then what's the point of coming back here to the dead girl's apartment? Let me show you something here in the kitchenette. A scotch bottle. Uh, you shouldn't pick that up, Johnny. Print. Yeah, prints. And where your boys dusted over them to show them up. But look. Yeah? Right here they're smeared, see? By a piece of cloth. Sure, he tried to erase them when he killed that bottle. Now, come on back to the living room. And here, take a look at this. Well, what's the hi-fi set got to do with I it? I told you, Mary Grace and I sat here Sunday night talking and playing records. So? This record on the turntable is the same one we were playing just before I left her. Look at it. Hmm, Dolorima by Vingetti. Never heard of it. We shut it off because it got too noisy in the death scene from that opera, huh? Listen. Yeah, here it is. Holy... It sounds like somebody... Shut it off! I'll be done. Sure. The screams that Walker and his wife said they heard. And that record's what gave him the idea. And now it's a matter of pin it on him. All right, what have you got for his motive? Motive? Are you kidding? Didn't you see those pictures of all those beautiful half... Those, those babes he has on the wall of his room? And the pictures of the Marshall girl? All right. He was gone for Mary Grace, talked about her, dreamed about her, had her pictures all over his room, but she wouldn't give him a tumble. All right. All right. So he hits the bottle heavier than ever on account of this frustration over the Marshall girl. Wouldn't be the first time that sort of thing has happened. It happens all the time. So if he can't have her, he's going to kill her. You see my point? Yeah, and it's well taken, Randy. All right. Last weekend, you're taking his dream girl out on the town, having a good time with her, doing all the things he wished he could do. Go on. Well, it's too much for him, driving him out of his rum-soaked mind. Then he hears that screaming on that opera record. It gives him the idea. He wakes up his wife so she'll hear it, too. So his wife will think somebody's getting killed up there. But he doesn't let her go up there, right? Sounds good, Randy. After his wife goes back to bed, that's when she saw you leave, he goes up there and kills the girl. But if he was as sick as he appears to have been... John, the time like that, a man gets superhuman strength. Strength of a madman, they call it. And listen. I'm listening. His wife said she thought she heard him walking around, remember? I remember. So that's it. She finally got up, came up here and found the body. So naturally, she tied it all in with the screams her old man woke her up to hear. And that suited him perfectly. She couldn't help but alibi for him. Come on, let's get downstairs again. Well, I realize, Johnny, it's all circumstantial, and I still have to pin it on him. Or her. But I'll hold him on suspicion. Or her. The same circumstances would work just as well for Walker's wife if she were the killer. Yeah, but what about the motive? Jealous wife. Jealous of somebody taking that drunken bum out of her hair. That funny odor I noticed about her when I first stepped into this place. I finally remembered what it is. Hey, I noticed that like a uh, like a cooking spice. Well, it is sometimes. Cardamom seed. Cardamom? Yeah, they used to call it the drunkard's friend. A man could booze all night, chew a couple of cardamom seeds, kiss his wife goodnight, she'd never be the wiser. Well, I'll be... That odor was so strong in her bedroom that... Well, maybe she's the lush, huh? Hey... And tried to make the same thing out of her husband. On the excuse it would make him feel better. You you mean he isn't a heavy drinker, Doctor? No, he is not. Doctor, you said he has a heart condition. A very serious one. 
complicated by a... Yeah, yeah, I know. Could he possibly have got out of bed, climbed those stairs Sunday night, struggled with and killed someone? The odds against his surviving such a thing are a million to one. A hundred million. All right, I heard it all. That means you're going to start accusing me of killing that girl up there. Mrs. Walker, I told you to stay out of your husband's room. Yeah? Well, he's dead, Doc. Dead? I don't know what you give him, but he's dead. Did you give him more liquor? No. But you gave him enough before I came to... Wait here, all of you. Well, you're going to try to pin that Marshal Dame on me now that Charlie's gone? You've already pinned it on yourself, Mrs. Walker. What? You thought you'd left no fingerprints on that bottle up there. Why well, didn't? I used a handkerchief. Yeah. I. That's what I thought. Look, no, 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 wait a minute. I, I, I didn't mean that. Too late, I'm afraid. Oh, no, it ain't. Put down that gun, Mrs. Walker. All right. So I kill that dame on the second floor. And if I have to kill you, I... Oh! Uh. Thanks, Doctor. It's... It's quite all right, sir. Well, Randy, there's your killer. Happy? Yeah. I guess I ought to be. You? It doesn't bring back Mary Grace. <laughs> Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford? No, no wait. I took on this case myself because of Mary Grace and, well, whatever she may have meant to me is none of the company's business. Oh, sure, you'll have to pay the claim on her policy. But let it go with that, will you? The rest is on me. I want it that way. Understand? For old time's sake. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. I hope you enjoyed that uh, episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I did. I thought it was very good. I will be back again, of course, from 6pm GMT tomorrow evening. You can check out my podcast page, if you wish, at patreon.com forward slash Foxy After Dark. I love my Patreon subscribers, so please join. It would be really, really good of you if you did. Hello to all my uh, YouTube viewers as well. It's great to uh, have you guys watching along with listening to the podcast also. Can't wait to catch up with you all tomorrow night. Same time, same place. In the meantime, stay safe. Always be kind. Love you all.